Welcome to Trial Site News Weekly Roundup. Bangladesh Medical College Hospital Physician Sees Astounding Results with Ivermectin Drug Combination Targeting COVID-19. Operation Warp Speed, a potential game changer for Trump, and new technology that can be used for remote monitoring of individuals suspected of having COVID-19. All coming up, starting now. A popular Indian financial news platform, Live Mint, recently reported that physicians from Bangladesh Medical College Hospital, or BMCH, led by Dr. Tarek Alam, found that this antiparasitic drug, ivermectin, in combination with antibiotic doxycycline, yielded astounding results against the novel coronavirus called SARS-CoV-2. The trial site Investigator Network is a database of over 100,000 clinical investigators leveraged by the trial site news team and using this, we contacted Dr. Alam for a brief interview. He confirmed the positive results with their off-label use of ivermectin and doxycycline to date and made some helpful clarifications. Now, as of this episode, the nation of 162 million, the eighth most populous in the world, reports over 23,000 known active cases with 349 deaths. Anxieties have run high there over the concern of social, economic, and political turmoil, not to mention unprecedented health crisis should the pandemic break through current lockdowns. Now, much is at risk. Since the early 2000s, rapid economic growth has fueled a remarkable increase in national progress. The nation's per capita income nearly tripled between 2010 and 2020, and real opportunities for health and clinical research have opened up based on a recent trial site news research summary. Now back to Dr. Alam. Trial site news managed to get through to Dr. Alam, a wonderfully cordial and supportive doctor dedicated to the healthcare of all. The DACA based physician and professor commented that although some press referred to the effort as a study based on trial site news' questioning, it was not a formal regulatory approved study, but rather an ongoing hospital-specific approved off-label use of medication for some COVID-19 patients with escalating conditions. More specifically, they are combining a dosage of ivermectin orally with doxycycline. Now, Dr. Alam confirmed that the COVID-19 patients begin showing results within days and that thus far there have been no reported adverse reactions or safety issues of any kind. In fact, he emphasized that ivermectin has been used for many years as an antiparasitic treatment and at those existing recommended doses, it is deemed safe. Now, Dr. Alam pointed out that the medical team first learned of the potential from the Australian research which we covered back in April, and then began reaching out to other physicians in Bangladesh, and then more broadly with network peers in other parts of Asia, Europe, and the United States to discuss the potential off-label use, at least for select novel coronavirus cases. Now, Dr. Alam noted that this cannot be declared a cure or a treatment just yet. This is a very important point, which is not accurately emphasized by other media. He correctly declared what he and his colleagues have observed thus far. He understands the importance and requirement of randomized controlled trials for more specific and forceful claims. Dr. Allen reports that some of the doctors at his institution are organizing a regulatory approved clinical trial involving the use of ivermectin with COVID-19 patients. And of course, Trial Site News will be monitoring the situation for more specifics as they become available. The principal drug regulatory agency in Bangladesh is the Directorate General of Drug Administration, or DGDA. It functions under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare in the national government. Dr. Alam also commented on activity involving various approaches to COVID-19 in conjunction with ICDDRB, an international health research institute based in Dhaka. Bangladesh. Now, Dr. Alam reports that scientists from other nations, including the United States, get involved with ICD-DRB. He reports that this organization is working on new research associated with COVID-19. Now, based in Dhaka, Bangladesh, they are committed to solving public health challenges facing low- and middle-income countries through innovative scientific research, including laboratory-based clinical, epidemiological, and health systems research. 
They aim to improve the health and well-being of people living in the world's poorest nations by developing, testing, and assessing the implementation of interventions specifically designed for resource-poor settings. Early on, they developed an international reputation in diarrheal disease research. Among notable early achievements was their role in the development, testing, and implementation of Oral Rehydration Solution, or ORS a treatment they published on the website that is estimated to have saved millions of lives worldwide. Now, for more information on Dr. Alam and the 100,000 clinical researchers in the Trial Site Investigators Network, you can contact us at trialsitenews.com slash contact. And now let's bring our eyes back to the United States. Donald Trump has just established what could be a defining action in his presidency. Should the new federal government-driven Operation Warp Speed prove successful, he could turn what has been seen by media and political critics as a weak and lackluster response to COVID-19 to instead one deemed as a powerful leveraging of national power to drive biomedical process of unprecedented historical precedence. With an incredibly ambitious series of targets, including the establishment of a safe and healthy COVID-19 vaccine by January 2021, will this initiative fall short? Short, evidencing yet more federal government waste, or will it lead to a federally led endeavor driving historic, life saving results? With 30 million Americans out of work and tens of thousands dead from the virus, America needs a strong leader driving historic collaboration and cooperation, not to mention results. This petty or not so petty differences among American constituencies must be swept aside for a greater cause beating back SARS-CoV-2 for good, and jointly championing a transition out of fear, uncertainty, and doubt into a social, economic, and political renaissance powering a more harmonious future. A successful Operation Warp Speed could shape the Trump presidency and his legacy in the history books. The Trump administration announced the appointment of Monsef Slawi as chief advisor and General Gustav Perna as Chief Operating Officer of Operation Warp Speed, or OWS. The administration's national program to accelerate the development, manufacturing, and distribution of COVID-19 vaccines, therapeutics, and diagnostics. Congress has allocated $10 billion for the effort through supplemental funding, including the CARES Act, and Congress has appropriated other flexible funding. Over $6.5 billion has been designated by Congress for countermeasure development through BARDA, along with $3 billion for NIH research. Now, this will likely be one of the biggest tests of the Trump administration. Despite his early call to close the border back in January to China, the rest of the initial response to the growing threat was lackluster. Even the CDC was caught flat-footed, despite massive funds spent to prepare for such a crisis. The early testing technology was rife with issues and delayed by many weeks. Now, this, of course, started to change as America itself became the epicenter of the COVID-19 pandemic. With a far more severe situation than many contemplated, Trump had to establish a mission for himself and the country, tapping into his business, entrepreneurial, and restless energy to beat back the deadly pathogen. Trump appears to now be driving a bold and ambitious target that there will be substantial quantities of safe and effective vaccine available for Americans by January 2021. Trial site news has suggested that far stronger national leadership would be required to overcome this historically challenging public health crisis. It looks like Trump is taking on that challenge, and we applaud this move. So what is Operation Warp Speed? Well, it's a public-private partnership. Trump now commands that the effort drive a COVID-19 vaccine by January 2021. So how will this happen? The new federal government-inspired entity will drive the development, manufacturing, and distribution of COVID-19 countermeasures between components of HHS, including CDC, FDA, NIH, and the Biomedical Advancement Research and Development Authority, or BARDA the Department of Defense, private firms, and other federal agencies, including the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Energy, and the Department of Veterans Affairs. It will coordinate existing HHS-wide efforts, including the NIH's active partnership for vaccine and therapeutic development, NIH's RADx Initiative for Diagnostic Development, and work by BARDA. 
Now, Dr. Slawi is a venture capitalist and formerly chairman of global research and development and chairman of global vaccines at GlaxoSmithKline, where he led the development of five major novel vaccines. And as the four-star general in charge of the U.S. Army Material Command, General Perna oversees the global supply chain and installation and material readiness of the U.S. Army, including over 190,000 military, civilian, and contract employees. The group seeks to have substantial quantities of a safe and effective vaccine available for Americans by January 2021. And there's no doubt a vaccine by January 21, 2021 would be unprecedented. Now, according to the HHS press release, Trump has challenged all involved within the drug development world, but especially those stakeholders constituting Operation Warp Speed, to not only work day and night, but push the envelope even harder and more creatively to deliver palpable results. When it comes to any inefficiency, it will not be accepted anymore, as Trump will squeeze every last inefficiency out of the process of drug development and pour every resource we can get into this effort. It would appear that Trump is getting more serious about mobilizing and marshalling national power to take on the deadly pathogen. Defense Secretary Mark T. Esper commented that, in addition to deploying 62,000 military service members in direct support of fighting COVID-19 on front lines across the globe, the Department of Defense is racing towards a vaccine. Hence, Esper noted that the commitment of research and development operations such as DARPA and the Defense Health Agency, or DHA, combined with massive logistical knowledge and capacity to support the direct targets Trump established with Operation Warp Speed. So, Trial Site News will be following Operation Warp Speed with great interest, and we will keep you updated as news continues to develop. And finally, Developed by Biologics, a startup headquartered in Sao Paulo, Brazil, a sleep apnea home diagnostic and monitoring system based on the Internet of Things can be used for the remote monitoring of individuals with suspected COVID-19 or mild symptoms of the disease. The symptom can also be used to recommend transfer to a hospital if the patient's clinical signs worsen. Two private hospitals in Sao Paulo, the epicenter of the pandemic in Brazil, will test the technology. The development of the innovation was supported by FAPE-SP via a project funded under the pipe PIP grant program, a partnership between FINE-P, the Brazilian government's innovation agency, and FAPE-SP via its Innovative Research in Small Business, or PIPE, program. The physical part of the system is a cordless portable sensor, which, when placed on the patient's index finger, captures oxygen saturation and heart rate data. The data is then collected in real time by a free smartphone app available for Android and iOS platforms. The program automatically sends the data to the cloud and to a control panel operated by the medical team responsible for monitoring each patient. Now, if the system shows a drop in oxygen saturation, the medical team contacts the patient's or on-site caregiver. Low oxygen saturation is one of the main warning signs of a deteriorating condition in the case of both COVID-19 and sleep apnea, in which breathing repeatedly stops and starts. The team advises immediate hospitalizations if, in addition to the data showing a fall in oxygen saturation and heart rate, or the patient reports a fever, cough, fatigue, and difficulty breathing, which are typically symptoms of infection by SARS-CoV-2. The system enables the monitoring staff to refer patients to a hospital at the right time, lowering the risk of contagion by interaction with others and, above all, protecting healthcare workers. The technology can also be used by hospitals, health management, or organizations and insurers to monitor not only patients with suspected COVID-19 or mild symptoms of the disease, but also older folks and other members of the groups most at risk of developing a severe form of the disease. In hospitals, the system can be used to monitor non-critical COVID-19 patients and leave intensive care units beds free for critical patients. Now, biologics profiled by Crunchbase, is supported by Eretz Bio, a health tech startup incubator operated by the Albert Einstein Jewish Brazilian Charitable Society that also assists several firms with initiatives funded by PIPE and, and FAPE SP to develop technologies for COVID-19 diagnosis, monitoring, and treatment. 
Among these are MagNamed, which will supply 6,500 mechanical ventilators to the Ministry of Health of Brazil, and Hubox, which in partnership with Rad Square has developed a system that detects fever remotely. Now, this ecosystem of health tech startups has been agile, evidencing a capacity to reconfigure rapidly in order to create solutions for the fight against COVID-19, including technologies that can be used in triage to identify patients who require more treatment urgently. Thank you for joining us for this week's Weekly Roundup. As always, I look forward to seeing each and every one of you again. And until then, we'll see you next time.